Hello, hello, hello. Hola, hola, hola. Welcome to a new episode of the Yoga for All Bodies video podcast. Today, I have Lisa Mayer as a guest, an amazing guest for you. Lisa is a trauma-informed adaptive yoga teacher who loves to support others in personalizing their practice. She's white, queer, currently mid-fat, and able-bodied. Exploring embodiment helps Lisa to show up more bravely and in an authentic way in everyday life. She offers yoga to support others in this. Welcome, Lisa. Hi. Thank you so much, Natalia. I'm so happy to be talking today. I'm so happy you're here. I love what you're doing. I love the message that you're sharing with the world. That's why I'm honored that you're here today to speak with me, to speak with the audience of the Yoga for All Bodies video podcast. So I would like to ask you, how did you start in this yoga thing? <laughs> <sighs> how did I start? Well, I think the very, very first time I was um, exposed to yoga was when I was a little kid, like maybe around 10 years old. Um, and I had this video cassette that was like yoga for kids. <laughs> and I remember I played that video over and over again. And I remember loving it because there were all these poses that had animal names. And it was just like, as a kid, that was so fun to just like, okay, cow, cat, you know, lion. <laughs> I remember having so much fun with that. <laughs> so that was like when the seed was planted. And then when I was a teenager, around 15 or 16, I guess, um, I started to, I came back to it in a sort of more consistent way. Um, and I was learning it mostly from a book actually. And I can't, I don't still have the book. I don't remember what it was, but it was like yoga for teenagers or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like a special book for younger people. <clears throat> um, And so learning yoga and practicing yoga then was really me alone in my room, looking through a book and trying out the poses I saw and adding post-it notes to the pages of things I was interested in. And so I was definitely, I was learning from other teachers, but it was also like very much self-guided. So I was coming up with sequences for myself based on what I wanted to do. And that's kind of where it started, you know, as I got a little older and went to college, I had more access to yoga classes and like a laptop to watch videos on. But it really, it really did start from that sort of place of just like me in my room, just like moving my body around. Beautiful journey. Yes. <laughs> And when did you decide that you wanted to become a yoga teacher? And why? <laughs> <laughs> That's, I love this question so much. <laughs> um, so I, I found a studio that I really enjoyed and a teacher that I really enjoyed going to classes with um, in my early 20s. Um, and they were running a 200 hour training that it kind of grabbed my interest. And I was thinking, oh, well, I don't think I can be a yoga teacher because um, I'm kind of shy. I'm an introvert. I'm uncomfortable like talking in front of groups of people. I like, I don't know if I can really picture myself doing that. Um, but secretly I was picturing myself doing that. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't yes. really ready yet. Do you know that thing people say where like they're taking a yoga teacher training and they're like, oh, I'm just doing this to deepen my own personal practice. Yes, 50% <laughs> of the of the enrollment. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I said I was doing because I wasn't like confident or ready yet, but I was thinking about becoming a yoga teacher for sure <laughs> the whole time. Um and the reason The reason was really because I was having trouble finding the kind of classes that I wanted to join. Um, 
I was really interested in having a community and practicing in a room with other people. Um, you know, I love, I love my solitary alone in my room yoga practice, but also there can really be a certain magic to like being in a space together and having a community that's engaging in that. And it was, it was hard to find places where I really felt comfortable myself um, because I, I've always felt very strongly that there's kind, there isn't like one right way to do yoga. There isn't one kind of body that's good or right or, you know, um, and in so much, in so many of the yoga spaces that I had been exposed to, there was a lot of messaging I didn't like about whose bodies belonged and whose bodies were good and what health had to look like. Um, and I just didn't feel comfortable and safe in those spaces myself. So I, when I was thinking about becoming a yoga teacher, it was really because like I couldn't find exactly the spaces I needed. And I was thinking about, well, what if I can sort of make space for other people who are feeling the same? Love it. Yes, yes, yes. I think most of the yoga teachers that like us are sharing the message that everybody can practice yoga. We experience things like that, mm -hmm. feeling maybe unseen or, or that feeling in your gut, in your heart that oh, why I'm here? Why am I here? And, and, and why can't I be in the, in the back row <laughs> at the end <laughs> alone? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like for example, um, I would, I would find teachers who I liked just enough to practice with, but every now and then they would say something about like, you know, uh, summer's coming up, we're getting our bikini bodies ready, you know, yeah, yeah, and I was, ah, but you know, I put up with it because I couldn't find other places to practice with other people, so, and, and also that thing of, you know, you know, modify the pose if you need to, but no one shows you how. Yes. So I was always figuring that out for myself and I was always the only one doing my own thing. <laughs> so I just wanted to like be one of the people who is making those spaces like more normal and mainstream. <laughs> Amazing, love it. And it shows because when you teach from from a, a place of experience, it's super authentic and people relate with you. And I feel that in the content you share in social media, in your lives that I've seen. Yes, 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 yes. It's super needed. And people know when, when someone is trying to look like they are inclusive <laughs> and, when, and when the teacher really is inclusive. Yes. So yeah. thank you for the work you do. Thank you. And I know that you also focus on, and I love this, in personalizing the practice. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about that and why it's important? You know, I love that you're making me think about this because it feels just so <laughs> natural and obvious to me that like sometimes I forget that like, not everyone feels that way. Um, yes, the first time I, I heard you mention personalizing the practice, I said, yes, this is key. Ah, this you like key. that phrase. <laughs> yes, I yeah. love it. And for some for some teachers, they don't enjoy, I personally don't enjoy teaching 101. So for me, this is super, super interesting. So please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Teaching one-on-one -on -one is actually my favorite. Um, but I'll go back to your first question, personalizing the practice. Why, why is it so important? Mm -hmm. I mean, because um, people are the experts of their own bodies, right? And sometimes it really takes a lot of practice to sort of, you know, listen to information that you're getting from your body. Sometimes it takes practice to like, you know, 
really, really own that and own your body and be authoritative about your own body. But like, so when I'm attending a class with another teacher, what, what I'm looking for really is new ideas. I'm looking for, you know, a personality that I like to be around and a community that I like to be around, but I'm not looking for someone to tell me what's right for my body. Like I'm looking for ideas and then I play around with them and I decide that. And so that's the kind of teacher I really try to be for other people is I offer ideas, I offer guidance, I support you, I encourage you, but ultimately it's gonna be up to you what your practice feels and looks like. Because I just, I don't know what's best for everybody else. I can't, you know, I could say that I do, but that would be lying. <laughs> so, it's just not reality. So this personalizing your practice thing is really about like, you know, I have experience and ideas for you, but it has to be like a collaboration between us. Love that con concept. Yes, yes, yes. Because we are used and when we see it in many yoga teachers that they stand in the front and they really guide you, guide you. I have a, a, per, a personal problem with instructors and yoga teachers. Yeah. Yes, because for me, instructor is like, you want to move the bones. Mm. But the moment you are changing lives, you become a teacher. So I don't like when they say yoga instructor, I don't consider myself an instructor. Do you consider yourself an instructor or a teacher? I, I even, I even feel a little bit uncomfortable with teacher because like, I, yeah, sure. I mean, I guess I am teaching some things, but I've been using the word facilitator more actually, which is kind of like a mouthful and long to say. So I don't always use it. Like sometimes it's easier just to say I'm a yoga teacher, but I really like to think of myself as someone who's just like holding the space, you know, just kind of being there to to guide but not to like tell anyone what's the right way definitely is so I don't, <laughs> yes so i'm a little uncomfortable with teacher too but i like it much better than instructor that's for sure yes i feel the same yes 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 yeah. yes because it's super important to give them the people the freedom and the permission to explore your body your practice i always say that because we are receiving orders in all the other aspects of life. <laughs> Why in your mind? <laughs> and I'm really rebellious. Like I hate being told exactly what to do. So when I when I'm in a yoga class with you know another teacher, I I just kind of do my own thing. <laughs> you know, like what I'm doing might look different from everyone else, and I try not to be like really distracting about it. But there's a part of me that's kind of like, I like that I'm here showing other people that your practice can be your own, even if there is a teacher there. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. And that happens most of the times because the teacher is not offering things that work for most bodies. Mm -hmm. They are only repeating what they learned in their 200 hour teacher training, that all the classmates were able bodies, super flexible. Mm -hmm. I always say that taking the um, 200 hour teacher training is like going to beauty school. <laughs> I, I love makeup, so I, I make the parallel. I also studied makeup. When you study makeup, your classmates all love makeup. They all have amazing skin, so it's super easy to put mm -hmm. on makeup in that person. Same thing in the yoga teacher trainings. All know the poses, all are strong. Most are able bodies. So th that's, your, <laughs> that's your sample. How are you going to <laughs> take it out in the real world? So thank you one more time for the work you do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it, does, it takes a lot of work to learn and study about bodies that aren't like your own. Like it takes some really intentional effort to learn from teachers whose bodies are different from yours, just so that you 
aren't just teaching from your own experience, because it's important to teach from your own experience, but you also need to teach from what you're learning about other people's experience too. And that really takes work. And that doesn't happen a lot in, in yoga, in, you know, most trainings. Yes. And how, for example, you get a client, you mentioned that you loved uh, one-on-ones. So you get a student, you get this client, and what, how does it look to personalize a practice? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I have a set of questions that I've written out. It's like a, like a questionnaire for them to think about what they know about yoga, if they've practiced before, what do they know they like, what do they know they don't like, how do they feel about their bodies and movement in general, what would they like from me, why are they interested in working with me, so just a bunch of questions like that, and I tell them they don't actually have to give me the, the written out answers to the questions, it's just for them to think about So I've sort of helped prompt people to get as much clarity as they can about what they're looking for and what, what they feel they need. Um, and we start up by having a conversation about, about that. And from there, you know, I, what I love about one-on-one -on -one is there's a lot of opportunity for communication during a practice that it might not always happen in a group class. So like if I'm teaching a group class at the, be at the beginning, I can say, you know, anytime you have questions, anytime you want more support, you can always, you can always ask, you can always wave at me. You know, like even if I tell people that they can interrupt and ask questions and things like that people don't usually do it you know um there's sort of like and and it's the same for me i find it hard to speak up that way in a group setting but if you're working one-on-one -on -one with people it's a lot more natural where if i say okay here's a pose i think we could try are you interested and we play around with some ways to do it. And I say, okay, how's this feeling for you? And it's just so much natural that they can let me know right away what's going on for them. And then if, if I happen to work with them for a while, which has been what's going on, people usually want to see me once a week or once every two weeks, I start to really learn about their preferences and they start to learn more about their preferences. And of course, things always, always change and you feel different every day, but there's really this chance for us to actually talk about what's going on. And so that's what personalizing a practice looks like for me. And it's the reason I love one-on-one -on -one so much is because it's a lot easier to do that with one person than it is with a whole class. Absolutely. Like, I love, I, I do still love working with groups and there's always this part of me thinking like, oh, have, have I really offered something for everyone? Like, is this really working for everyone? And now that we're teaching virtually, it's so much harder. I can't just like look around the room mm -hmm. and like figure out who's having a hard time or like, you know, who something isn't working for because everyone's just kind of turned off their screens which you know I want people to turn their screens off if that makes them comfortable but it also means that I'm struggling to personal to help them personalize the practice if they need me to help with that so <laughs> yes thank you for that yes I, I I love that approach because yes especially if I mean I'm assuming If, if I'm self-conscious or I don't feel I have the tools to go to a public class, it's genius to have a teacher that can really empower me, give me the basic tools. And maybe I'm going to continue practicing one-on-one or one day I'm going to feel ready to go to a yeah. public setting. <laughs> 
Yes. I, um, so when I first started teaching, I did a very, very small group class that was just me on my own. It wasn't through a studio. And like, I would get two to four people maybe who would come to it, but they were all people who are coming to this. They all found me because they didn't feel comfortable going to a yoga studio yet for all sorts of really valid reasons. And I had one person who came to those classes and really loved them. And then I had to stop, I had to stop doing them for reasons I won't get into, but anyway. <laughs> um, and then she was, she was someone who was really nervous about practicing in a studio. And then a few months after I stopped running that class, I ran into her at a yoga studio. We were both taking a class with someone else. And she said, Liza, practicing in your little class made me realize that I want to go to classes and I belong in them if I want to. Like that, that just made my heart sing oh, <laughs> so much. Yes. So like, yes, that's what I want for you. Like that confidence to do what you actually want. <sighs> yes, those are the days that, that you think, oh, the work I'm doing, mm -hmm. all the challenges are worth it. <laughs> I'm sure you've done that for so many people. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that's the beautiful thing, especially when when we are sharing the message and doing the work to make the practice the practice accessible and welcoming for everybody. I, I always say that I, I see the work I do and maybe you will see it the same way. Almost like the kindergarten, you build a super solid base, a super solid foundation. You give them the tools and then they go out in the world. And I love when my students are taking yoga sculpt classes, power yoga, vinyasa, and many are going into yoga teacher training. And they say, basically, I can take any training because I know that I can adapt the practice for my body and for my future students. Ooh, that's yeah. It's so powerful when you learn how to adapt for yourself because then you really can enjoy so many more spaces because like you don't need the teacher to know everything. They just need to be like a personality you like and have a practice that you enjoy enough. And then like, you know, the rest you've got yourself. Yes. I love that so much. Yay. <laughs> And the way you were teaching before the pandemic and during the pandemic changed? Yes, yes. How? <laughs> <laughs> such, such a hot topic in yoga land. <laughs> um, yeah, so I stopped teaching in-person classes right away. Um, I switched at the beginning of the pandemic. I had one private client We switched to virtual pretty easily, and I've, you know, gathered a handful, full more of those in a, the past few months. What's changed the most, really, is my focus, because I got, I got clear, I got clearer about loving working with people one on one, and that I feel, for me that's not actually very hard to do on, you know, virtually. Um, yeah, I miss being in the same room as people, but it's also more accessible in a way because people don't have to, you know, come to me or come to some space we've picked out. They can just practice at home and I can be with them there at home, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, virtually. And um, the, be, teaching group classes did become more challenging for me because my style depends so much on reading the room. Like I come up with a loose plan for a class and then I see who shows up and I see how they're responding to my plan and I change it as I go. Um, and that's really hard to do virtually when I can't necessarily see people. 
um, or I can't see all of them. So I still, you know, I do still teach a group class and I enjoy doing it and I get some lovely feedback from it, but I've changed my focus. And that's the thing that's changed the most for me as a teacher during the pandemic is I, I got clear and I started, started going after a different thing. Love it, yes. <laughs> and now a question that I ask all the guests. Yoga for All Bodies is all about variations and using props. So I would like to know, what is your favorite prop and why? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> only one, only one. Only one. Uh, <laughs> I love all props. I would say my very favorite is blocks. Um, blocks are kind of what I've had to work with all along. And I love how they can make any any class I go to or any class I teach instantly blocks make anything more adaptable and accessible you know lunges sun salutations all sorts of things if you add blocks to them they suddenly become just like a lot better <laughs> for so many more people so blocks all the way I love them amazing yay <laughs> and finally anything that you would give as an advice for someone that is maybe self-conscious, afraid of trying yoga? What yeah. can you tell them? I would say to that, first that that's so normal. Like that is such a normal experience. I feel that way when I'm stepping into a yoga studio, if I'm not the teacher in this situation. <laughs> like, I feel on guard and self-conscious and unsure what's gonna happen. It's better now because I do have that internal confidence, but that's not where I started. So it, it's really normal. It's really normal and it's okay. And it makes a lot of sense. Like being nervous about that, It makes sense. It's just, it's your body's way of trying to protect you from people hurting you or making you feel ashamed. And it, it's just so natural. So like, I would, I would say that. And then I would encourage people to think about what they really want from a yoga practice. And maybe they don't know because they're not that familiar with yoga or with their bodies like maybe they're not sure but really spend a bit of time thinking about something you do know you want from it and researching researching different teachers and classes so that when you show up hopefully they will have something that's for you and also know that There's so many styles of yoga out there. There's so many teachers out there. Like if that first try doesn't go the way you want it to, like there's something for you. There's something for you somewhere and you'll find it. And maybe some of it you'll make up yourself, but it can be for you if you want it to be. And there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Love it. And how can people find you? Promote yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so a great place to start is my website, www.yogawithliza.com. I also, I share a lot on social media right now because it's, it's important to me that people can like really scope me out and learn what I'm about just you to like ease any nerves about starting to work with someone. So Instagram is great. It's at yoga.with.liza. There's also a Facebook page like that. So I'm sure we can include some some links in whatever description this this video will have. But yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're watching this video, go follow Liza. Before I told Lisa, because I'm Latina, But now I know it's Liza. Don't worry, don't worry about it at all. <laughs> so go, follow, enter the website, and 
Of course, if you're watching this video, like it, share it, subscribe, because this is a message that everybody needs to know. Yoga really is for all bodies. Thank you so much, Liza, for being here, for sharing your passion, and for doing the work that you are doing. Thank you so much, Natalia. And just quickly, I'm, I'm sure we'll connect again mm -hmm. online before the end of the year, but I'm just wishing you in 2021 so much success and safety because I see you putting a lot of new stuff out there too right now. And I believe in it. It's awesome. And I appreciate you. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> a big hug. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. If you're watching this video, And remember, everybody can practice yoga. See you. Bye.